research uh, I currently did with a couple of my colleagues, uh, Vincenzo Ciancalini and Robert McCardo. Uh, we all work for Trend Micro Research. And uh, the research is called HTTPS based clustering for assisted cybercrime investigation. So it's a uh, borderline with web security. Is uh, so what I will uh, I will show you is a uh, is a system that we design to help our security analyst uh, to do investigation. Uh, so nowadays there are a lot of target attacks and um, they're pretty difficult to detect them in kind of in automated form and uh, there was no actually previous research in that field. So we invest some energy in trying to build a tool that can do in a kind of semi-automated form. So we'll talk uh, about, these are the ingredients for today, so we'll talk about target attacks, we'll talk about how to analyze HTTP trace such as GET and POST request uh, of our uh, customers uh, to try to find the target attack in semi-automated way. So briefly, I, who am I? So I'm Italian, as you can understand from accent, but I live like most of the, uh, of the last seven years abroad, and uh, I work uh, now for Trend Micro Research, and we do research in different fields, range from web security to malware, to uh, privacy and so on. So the roadmap for today is this one. So I give like an introduction on uh, uh, what uh, what is a target attack and what is the difference between target attack and uh, traditional conventional widespread attacks, and uh, what are the problem in detecting this attack, and why there is a need to to detect this kind of attacks. And then I will present the system that we design that we call Sponge. Uh, a system that, as I said before, we use to process uh, thread information collected at client side from our uh, population of machine. Uh, and the experiment we, we actually uh, run to prove that the system works and we conclude. So security is uh, hot nowadays, so it's a good field to work on. So we are all pretty busy uh, in working security. And I would say that it's actually burning. So if you look at the Symantec Internet Security Trail Report, uh, even if you know, the spam volume is, de is constantly decreasing over time, we have a bunch of other problems. So web attacks are probably the problem number one. So we, last year we saw a rise in web attacks about 30%, with more than uh, 5,000 uh, uh, new vulnerability discovered on a year. And uh, what is interesting is that there are a lot of uh, uh, new phishing attempts that are targeting uh, uh, social networks, uh, both on mobile but on a traditional desktop. So that's probably an interest uh, for our attackers. And uh, and uh, and we had like a more than 40% increase uh, in targeted attacks. Uh, so that means that attackers are more and more uh, pushed to do this kind of attacks instead of conventional widespread attacks. So. Uh, so, what is target? I mean, what do we mean for target attack? So, we recently saw uh, a huge shift uh, from a world where there were widespread malware that was infecting discriminatory everybody. So, if you are male or if you are female, if female, if you are Italian or if you are German, so we didn't care. You know, I mean, you just we, you just want to have as much more infection as possible, no? So we move from that world to a world uh, where the attackers are more target. They choose their victim, you know. I want to target, you know, some banks and some banks even off of Germany, only those banks because they have something interesting for me. So we move from a world where uh, the attackers were driven from curiosity, so just for fun. So probably the just for fun area is over and it was over already five years ago, so now it's completely dead to a world where the attacks are driven by uh, either a criminal organization or by, by the nation itself. So we, we saw a lot of like nation-driven attacks. And uh, the main goal here is espionage, okay? So this kind of attacks, the goal there is uh, to, to try to get access to the assets, asset, be there in a stealthy mode and get infor interesting information out of it documents of any kind, plans, or whatever. 
so um, probably the, one of the most famous like target attacks we saw recently was Stuxnet. So I mean, I guess all among you guys, if you work in security, you know what Stuxnet is. It's a piece of code uh, that uh, has been used to try to sabotage uh, a nuclear plant in uh, in Iran. And, uh, and recently, our Snowden uh, friend, uh, former nation NSA contractor, revealed that. Uh, basically US, together we use a co-wrote this piece of software. So this is a kind of an example of target attack that is nation driven, and we saw a lot of them. Uh, another one is uh, Red October. So Red October is, uh, is not just a single target attack, it's an operation that was ongoing for more than three years, and was uh, targeting governmental, government uh, organization, diplomatic organization, embassy, research institution, around the globe. So these are all examples of target attacks, so attacks that focus on a specific industry, on a specific target, and the main interest is usually espionage. And uh, uh, if you look at another AV uh, company, in particular Kaspersky Lab, uh, they claim that target attacks only in 2012 cost more than 1.6 million pounds to companies. So there is a really a strong need to have like a system that uh, try to help us in detecting this attack as early as possible because this one was ongoing for three years and you say wow you know you are uh, you are under attack in so long time and you didn't understand that you're under attack I mean something's wrong there you know so okay so that's what we want to do you know so how can we at least try to detect these attacks in a semi-automated form. Mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of difficult to spoil because uh, uh, they're difficult to distinguish from traditional widespread attacks. So the technology behind is the same. It can be a piece of malware that is uh, sent by mail, it can be like a drive-by setup to, uh, to exploit like our, our users. So there is not much about the difference from a technology point of view. The fact is that met the methodology is different, so the way in which the attack is delivered, and the target are different. So the target are specific to, to my target that I want to infect, you know, the target I want to target. So, so we start from here, and we start thinking on a technique to kind of spoil this attack, and we, we came up with a tool that we actually are using nowadays to assist a cybercrime investigation. So the tool is generating a, every day a report that we pass to our security analyst. And the security analyst has something to start with, you know. It's like a crawler that helps you to, to do a security assessment, you know. You start with a crawler, if you have a network that is a slash eight with, a, I don't know, thousands of machines, you won't do it manually, you know. You start with Nessus or Nmap, you get something, you know, that help you out to do the assessment. Here is the same. So we have this tool that analyzes the data that we daily connect from, uh, we daily collect from a uh, uh, million of uh, uh, users' machines that are using our software and, uh, and is able to reduce the number, uh, the, the huge number of normal incident, incident that we see every day to a more manageable amount for further investigation. Okay, so that's the introduction of the problem, and uh, here is the idea. So, so our idea is uh, to look for those machines that have a common network behavior, so they behave like in a similar way uh, from a network point of view, okay? Because they are, for example, affected by the same thread, so they are targeted by the same guy, so they have for example, they're running the same malware, or they are involved in the same botnet, okay? And we do it from a network point of view, the analysis. And then when we, we, f we group this machine together, we have a group of similar machine, then uh, we try to contextualize this machine. So we look at the machine and we say, are those machines like running in, in, uh, in multiple organization? Are those organizations involved, for example, in the same business? Which kind of business are maybe an organization uh, are, for example, banks, or are, you know, some uh, nuclear plants down in Iran, 
or which kind of of you of, uh, of machine of you know of business there is behind this machine so everything is uh, summarizing the graph here I'm going to uh, go through that so this is the general uh, architecture of our tool so so it's like this so we have like some we, some events that we process on a daily fashion during night time and I will then talk later what are the events but briefly are just uh, network traffic from this machine and we pre-process them to be able to take to get rid of a useless information because there are really a lot of information and we want to be efficient as possible so we only take the, those events that are interest to what we want to do we cluster them to create these groups of machines that are somehow similar so affected by the same problem and then uh, we we group together and then we run the analysis at the end uh, to look for example if in which organization this machine are, are operating in which country and so on and then we come up with a report for for our for our analyst so let's start from the data set so which kind of data we want to work on so the data we work on are HTTP and HTTPS network trace so that uh, are collected at client side so either on consumer machine so normal end user or on server or also on uh, it might be even a proxy installed for the whole network so it's proxying over everything and we collect information there really a proxy level so we collect uh, uh, basically the URL that the machine are connecting to either get or post request and um, and those ones are related to URL that we already know being malicious. Okay, so if a machine is connecting to this URL, it might be that because he received a new spam email and the guy click on the spam and connect back to you know, a phishing site, or it might be that the machine is infected by malware, so it's connecting to the botnet, or it might be that the user is, uh, uh, is lured into visiting a site and download a fake AV and so on. So this is our data set. And we have a population of about 20 million installations worldwide. And uh, so you can imagine how much traffic is, okay? So the first things we do is to do some nice pre-processing of all this data. And we do five different processing here. So first we ignore all the parental controlled URLs and we just keep those URLs that are malware related or uh, phishing related or any kind of uh, exploit kit related and so on. We get use all the parental control URL. Then we do some sampling at class B level. So our granularity, you can specify, but as it is now, we have a granularity of class B. So if there are like multiple machines from the same class B that make the same request, we just keep one request. Then we do some event sampling. So if this, uh, if that means that if a machine is infected and is accept, uh, requesting the same malicious URL over and over, for example, it's because it's botnet controlled, we just keep like one record for, for that. Then we remove uh, any duplicates. So if a URL is widely request, for example, from more than 50 different networks, we remove it because we assume that this might be a widespread attack. So actually this is, uh, if you want, okay, here if you go higher, so if you specify 100 network, you will have probably less false positive, right? And finally, we, we learn from the past. So we run this process in batch mode every night. And uh, if we see that some, uh, some machine are not involved in target attack, and, or even some URL are not involved, we avoid to reprocess them the day after. So we learn from the past. So let's start. Okay, so do you have uh, some question till here or before I go into the detail because it's getting a bit more come on Nick. The fifty number we choose it empirically. So I mean we can discuss about that, but uh, if there are more than fifty class V networks that are infected by the same uh, thread it might be that most probably is not a targeted attack, you know? Because it's a lot. 
So if you are targeting an organization, usually you target a couple of class B or a class A, but not 50. But uh, you can tune it, you know? I mean, all these parameters, you can tune it. So it depends from the capacity of, uh, of your processing. Because now the system now run on a single machine with eight core, so it's distributed, but it's very easy to be ported to run on multiple machines. So of course, if you have multiple machines, you can tune, you can even get rid of this preprocessing, you can bring in everything. So in any case, uh, you will have a result later on. So some other question on what we want to do and you no, know, is it clear? people are shy here so okay I hope it's clear so the first step is clustering so I don't know who among you is isn't aware of what is clustering but briefly is a technique that is widely used in data mining and allow you to group together elements that are similar okay so in our case we look for pattern in the collect data so in URLs and we do clustering according to URLs that are similar on the host name or similar on the request in terms of path and query string or both of them. So example is this. Okay, suppose that you have like five domain, five host name. Okay, four are a typo squatting uh, version of, a, of cracklist and one is google.com. So if you want to cluster this host name together, you compute the distance, okay? So if you have like n host name, computationally you will have n square divided by two as uh, as uh, um, uh, difficult how to say time to to process it. So you compute the distance between this host name and this value between zero and one. So if you have zero, means that the two strings with two host names are very similar. If you have one, it's very, 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 very different, no? So in gray here, you see that Google.com is very different from the other. In, in fact, they have like a distance that is more than the threshold, but experimentally we set it at 0, 0,4, okay? So that means that these four host names, they will be grouped together because they are similar, and Google will be alone. This is the same example for a URL used by two uh, different exploit kits. One is black hole and one is nuclear, they are pretty famous. So as you can see, this exploit kit, they have a similar like request. So for example, black hole has a request of this form. Okay, so it's a PHP script with just a single letter and a parameter are called F and E. And instead nuclear is a jar with a long like ASCII file name, okay? So here we same, uh, we do some, uh, uh, some clustering on the request, and even if hosts are different, we can group together these three URLs belonging to the same cluster that we label as black hole, and these three to another one that is called nuclear. So the important things here is to choose a correct distance function. So it's a function that allows you to compute the distance between the host name, okay? So if you want to measure you know how much water is here. Okay, you need a, you need something you need something uh, a distance function, a kind of distance function. In this case, a liter. You know, so one bottle is one liter. If it's more than a bottle, it's more than a liter. So here is the same. So for the host name, since the host name are strings, we use uh, what we call what if I mean, standard distance function that is called Levenstein. So. This function, for example, if you want to change, compute uh, the distance between these two strings, Robert and Roger, so the distance here is of two because you need uh, two changes to go from one to the other one. So the first one, you change the B with the G, and the second one, you delete the T. So the distance here is of two. Instead of for the request, we use the Levenstein distance for the path. And for the query string, we use another distance function, very common, that is called jacquard. So this one count how many parameters the two requests have in common, okay? So, uh, mm, for example, here, you can see that these two URLs, okay, they have two parameters in common, okay? 
So we, we ignore in this case the values because uh, we often saw that exploit kit and a botnet, uh, they have a value that change very rapidly. So if you bring the value in, uh, it's very hard to, to, cluster, uh, to cluster these URLs. We put together the path and the query string with this formula and we, we have a distance of the request. So when we have the groups, okay, so the groups you can see it, uh, so at the end of this process you will see, you can imagine your URLs being uh, organized in that way. So as a, as a series of bubble, no? So you have like, uh, I'm going from this side, from the left side of the audience. <laughs> So you can see, for example, in red are those URLs that have been clustered per hostname, and in blue those are that have been clustered by request. So more bigger they are, like the circle, means more similar URLs there are inside. Okay. So we have really two sets of different uh, uh, URLs, those clustered by hostname and those clustered by uh, request. Then there are some other, you know, here. These two are violet, you say. Violet? What's that? So these are URLs that have been clustered for both, both hostname and both request, okay? Because they have, I mean, either, so both are similar, you know? So a URL that have similar hostname and similar request. So in that case, so at the end of clustery, we have to run another process that where we merge these two sets of cluster together, okay? To get rid of all of these useless uh, clusters. So those are that are, for example, one the subset of another one. For example, if you take uh, the cluster two here in the middle, okay, this is a typo squatting um, cluster of uh, Facebook. This one has been cluster is uh, is labeled with H, means that is uh, an host name based cluster, and this and this cluster because they have like a similar host name. If you look at this one, they have uh, this is a merge result. Of, a, of two clusters, one with a similar host name, it's very difficult to pronounce, and one with the same request. So this one has been merged together and uh, these two clusters become C3 in a single cluster, and both this URL have both similar host names and similar request. Okay, I don't quite do, we don't want to spend way more time here, but the idea is pretty clear. So we have uh, this malicious URL, that are accessed by our uh, machine, okay? And we look at the URL that are malicious and we want to group them together, okay? So those URLs are similar to each other, this one are similar to each other, this one here are similar to each other, and yet we are here at this step, okay? So the next step is, uh, okay, so which machine is generating this request, okay? So. This are the URL. The question is, okay, so how many machines generate this request? How many machines generate this request and so on? So we map the URL that have been clustered to the IP address, okay, to the machine. So we bring like the machine information inside. That means this column. So what I mean here for event is this, of course. So so for example, you know, when you do like this, then you can answer a question like, uh, the machine one, to which cluster belongs to? So let's make a test. Want to answer here. <laughs> what is machine one? C1 and two, exactly. So machine two, C1 and 2, the same. So why we do this? Because uh, when we know which machine to which cluster they belongs to, we can then understand which machine are similar. So we have like a, a similar network behavior and this is what we want to do. So we want to know which machine are, for example, infected by the same malware or uh, involved in the same botnet or they're reaching out to the same drive by download site or they are reaching out to the same phishing side or whatever. So in the step four, we group the machine together. And uh, for example, in group one, we have a machine one and two, okay, that share cluster number one and cluster number two. Okay, so this machine 
they have some similarity among each other. Instead, if you take the group four, there is just machine six there that is alone. Okay. So why one machine should belong to two different clusters? So what's the use case here? The use case is this one. Take for example a drive-by download infection. So what happens usually is that the victim okay, visit uh, the malicious URL. Okay, the malicious URL check whether the victim uh, come from, which kind of operating system is running, which kind of browser is running, which version of the browser, and then redirect the victim to a specific exploit. Okay, so if victim is reaching out with uh, I, uh, Internet Explorer, whatever version or to redirect to a page that contain exploit for uh, that browser. So in this scenario, this victim will belong to a cluster of pages related to the redirection, and the cluster of pages that serve that exploit. Okay, so that's the case where a machine belongs to cluster. Finally, at the end, when we have this, <coughs> we correlate the machine for the groups and for the cluster. So we do two types of analysis. The first one is cluster-based, the second one is group-based. So in the cluster-based, we'll, we, we look for uh, each cluster, and we look for those clusters that might be interesting, for example, because uh, they might be, you know, uh, they might contain machine that they all operate in the same industry. Okay, it might be, for example, government. So we might, I might look, uh, give me like all those clusters that involve machine in, in the industry, right? In the, in, the, in the government. Or maybe, you know, in the, in the German government. Okay, so I can really look for those threats those infections, those attacks that are targeted only to a particular organization or group of organization or only particular industry. Okay? And the groups one is basically an extension of the first one. So instead of looking just for one cluster, I can look for multiple clusters. So in the example I saw you before here, where you have like two machines belongs to two clusters, I can uh, group one. I do the same query on groups. So give me all those groups of clusters with all those machines that have like a specific, I don't know, of a specific country or under you know, this, a specific internet service provider or that belong to a certain autonomous system. I can query whatever I want. So as it is now, the system uh, automatically uh, look for those uh, uh, machine and cluster between two and five, this value will make change, for that uh, uh, with machines that are ever in the same industry. We have like 20 different industries, so ever in the same industry, ever in the same country, or both. So what's the result here? The result is we have uh, this tool uh, that we wrote in Python, and is, uh, is running like uh, nighttime. Uh, so we run every day, we collect like data from this uh, 20 million like uh, installation and we process the data using a single server, and the processing time takes something like between uh, six and eight hours, and uh, then the result is sent to another machine with a database, and this machine does the post-processing analysis, so basically correlate like the industry and the location information, and generate a report for the analyst. So we made an evaluation over one week of data, and um, some of the findings we had uh, are these two I'm going to, to present here. So the first one is related to uh, a, an infection of a malware that infect three uh, distinct organizations. That uh, one is in Mexico, one is in Turkey, and one is Morocco. And uh, the three organizations were manufacturing uh, fabric uh, so they are classified in, as a technology sector, and they were infected by by uh, malware uh, that uh, it was injecting to the memory space of uh, standard Windows uh, programs such as Notepad or SVD Host, and uh, this is a 
classic technique to, to keep like persistence of the machine so to avoid like easy detection and is, is often used when you want like to keep persistence there and uh, and if you look instead at the at the IP address here they all belong to a net block that uh, that itself belong to what is called the uh, RBN I don't know if you're aware of this, is a Russian business network. So it's a network that uh, is uh, owned by some criminals that are known uh, to provide support for targeted attacks. So you can basically rent the network and you can use it to, uh, to deliver, uh, so you have all the infrastructure ready for you, you know, for, uh, for hosting uh, malware or CNC server, whatever. And here we were uh, targeting three different like manufacturing companies uh, in uh, in these three countries. And the next one is a, a bit more evident. So here is not just a single cluster, but it's a two cluster that have been grouped together uh, because both of these two organizations that are two oil and gas uh, uh, companies residing in Malaysia, they were both uh, like uh, uh, involved in, in this botnet and uh, this botnet uh, was controlled by malware that was a uh, malware uh, customized for industrial environment uh, such as can be like uh, an oil and gas uh, organization and uh, and the domain here so this uh, nucleardiscovery.com was registered if you look on domain tool that, he, that has, is a service over the internet that keep like uh, an history of a, of a registrant for those for domain. You see that it was belong was registered under the name of a Chinese guy that was also uh, owning some other domains that were known in the past to be used in target tax operation. So I'm not saying that the tool does everything automatically, but at least you know provide to. Uh, to uh, security analyst, uh, a starting point uh, for further uh, investigation, and is able to reduce the uh, really the huge amount of uh, incident that we daily see from a lot of infection all around the globe, only to those ones that are you know more related to target attacks. And uh, so to conclude. Uh, as a Symantec has uh, cited in his uh, report last year, so we really saw like an, in an increase in the number of target attacks. So there are more than 30% of target attacks last year. So there is really a need to come out with some s tools, you know, to, to help the detection of these, of these attacks. And uh, as it is now, there are not really uh, existing tools and not previous research has been done. So this is a first attempt that for sure has a lot of like problems, but with that, with this tool, we were able to, to spoil some of these attacks that are very difficult to do manually, because as I said before, the technology behind these kind of attacks are the same as the widespread one, so there is not big difference from a technology point of view. It's only the methodology that change and the target, so the victims that are different, are just some victim, the victims, are not randomly chosen, but are actually uh, very, uh, I don't know, chosen very carefully, you know. So with this tool that we propose, we look for those machines that behave the same from a natural point of view, and then we look into the different groups, and we look for those groups that are interested, because they contain machines, for example, that, have, uh, that are infected by a certain malware, and they run in a specific uh, industry sector, can be, for example, oil and gas. And, uh, and given our population of 20 million machines, if we see that just you know, a group of five machines behave in that way, and uh, all these five machines are, for example, of, of a specific industry, it might be interest to look at those, you know? So we want to have some future work here. The first is to have, uh, instead of processing the, day, the, uh, the data day by day, during night time, we want to do it in a kind of online fashion. So that means that every day we enrich the result of the day before with a, some upgrade. So we want to do some GPU assisted processing to make it faster. And this should be pretty trivial to do. Uh, 
And third, we want to bring in some more features, for example, every process name or the process hash. So we now only cluster based on the host name or the request, so two features. But it would be cool also to bring in the process. So if we see, for example, that machine infected by a malware of the same family, or even that has the same hash, connect to two URLs that are completely different, okay? But we know that behind, you know, the process that generates the request is uh, the same, you know, the same hash, or maybe of the same family. It might be that these machines are really generated, are really infected by the same, you know, uh, malware. Even if the URL they're connecting to is completely different, so we would have missed it without that piece of information. So yeah, that basically concludes my talk. So I think we have five minutes left. So feel free to ping me to ask me question, or we can maybe meet tonight, and I will be here. So thanks for listening and I'm open to question. Thank you very much. There are any questions left? So everybody except Nick is allowed to make questions here. So but Nick can suggest to his friends. So okay. Okay, we can go on. Yeah, the idea here is to, yeah, so Luca is asking uh, with respect to Stuxnet uh, or to a lot of uh, target attacks that are hidden and stealthy for, uh, for a long time and we, we cannot observe them, how this can help. So this help uh, with our first, uh, we, uh, we are monitoring uh, that particular machine. So there should be a piece of software that is running there and is monitoring the network connection. So in our case, uh, is a proxy. So if there is a proxy, we can already see something, you know. And if a malware that is generating some network activity, we might see something. If a malware instead is uh, completely independent, disconnected from a network, so we can observe any activity from a network point of view, we are blind. But if it's actually reaching out, for example, a CNC server, reaching out uh, uh, another machine that is controlling using a backdoor the victim. At that point, we see the connection, and if we see that their connection coming only from a couple of nuclear plants, uh, only from Iran, and not the rest of the world, the globe, this system is detected because it's something that we are looking for. So we look for candidates that are interesting, you know, groups of infecting machine that are special, that are you no know, circumscribed in a specific country or in a specific industry, especially the interest in industry like government uh, organization or uh, energy sector. Any other question? Okay, yeah, it might work. Yes, so the question is, uh, so we do all the processing of a million of events, it takes like eight hours, uh, and then at the end you only look for, uh, I don't know, a certain business. So he's asking me, okay, you know, why don't look for a business before, no? Instead of doing all the analysis and, uh, because, uh, it might be that there are some target attacks that are targeting some business that you are not uh, interested in at the beginning, for example. Or you can do the other way around. You can bring in as a feature. Yeah, you can br that's a good idea. You can bring in as a feature as well, together with the host name and request and the process name maybe, even the, the business. So you can have like group together by machine by business. Yeah, make it worth a try probably. Yeah. Marco, thank you very much for your talk. Yes. Okay, thanks for listening and uh, hope you like it. Okay. We have an announcement.